Big Fisherman. Welcome back to Everyday's Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Everyday's Movie Ever. Today, I'm going to be talking about The Big Fisherman. The Big Fisherman is a 1959, I believe, theatrical release. Because, you know, yeah. Um, and it's about Simon Peter, the disciple of Jesus, and a princess named Farah um, coming to know the teachings of Jesus and deciding they want to spread the teachings of Jesus. It is directed by Frank Borzage, cinematography by Edward Coleman, and Lee Garms, editing by Cotton Warburton and Paul Weatherwax. Music by Albert Hay Malati Malote, and it's written by uh, Howard Estabrook and Roland V. Lee. It is based off a book by Lloyd C. Douglas. I don't have a full summary, I just have like, Pharaoh wants revenge for the death of her mother against her father, and on her way to try and get that, she meets John the Baptist and then Simon Peter, who becomes a disciple of Jesus, and she kind of just like gets influenced by them and decides not to kill her dad and instead go with Simon Peter to spread the word of Jesus. Film stars Howard Keel as Simon Peter and Susan Conner as Princess Farah. This was the first film for Roland Vili in over like 10 years. It was shot in Panavision 70. Walt was actually very against it, but Roy was very for it. So that's how it ended up getting distributed by Buena Vista Entertainment, which is why it's on the list now. Um, it was shot in the San Fernando Valley. Um, it was the last film that Borzage completed and it was, um, Howard, Howard Keel um, was in like musicals and other things and he wanted to transition into straight acting. That's why he chose this role. Uh, it was thought of as pretty middle of the road, which I thought was interesting. And uh, it had about a $4 million budget and it's kind of hard to tell how much it made, but it did make or $3 million in rentals. Cinematography is good. Um, pretty standard for the time. I don't have a lot to say. It feels very much um, like the kind of movie it is, right? 1959. I haven't seen the Charlton Heston, like, Ten Commandments all the way through, but it is giving me that vibe. Like I kind of already mentioned, it seems like it might be faithful to the book because Farah does want to kill her father, who she didn't know who was her father, because her mother dies, except I'm not so sure her mother does die in this movie. I thought her mother did die in the scene. But then later, I could have sworn I saw her mother back at that palace being like, oh great, she's back. She's going off to live her life. So I'm very confused if her mother actually died in this movie. I am going to count it because I am 98% certain she died. So I'm gonna count it and whatever, it'll come out in the wash. Um, Jesus does appear in the movie, but they don't show him. They just show his hands. Um, and I thought it was interesting because he was preaching and I'm pretty sure it was verbatim the Bible, um, which I, I did not grow up in a religious household. I know, um, societies know, well, know of Christianity. So, but I thought it was, the Bible was like a, like a, a retelling of what happened. Like someone wrote down what happened. It wasn't like Jesus was writing it, right? So for him to be saying verbatim the verses in the Bible, I don't think so. That feels a little sus. I feel like he would have talked normally, right? Not that, I mean, it was normal for then, I suppose. Also, would he have been speaking in English? Like, it's just a whole thing, right? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't want people to come for me, okay? I'm not trying to offend anyone. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's interesting that he would be speaking Bible verses verbatim, or at least it sounded very much like it when, you know, he also sounded so old, which I don't, I, I don't think he was old. Like, he, I know 33 is a big age, right? So he sounded very old. Um, I also thought it was interesting. Again, no one please come for me. I just don't have an education in, uh, a deep education in Jesus and everything. I know the basics. Um, but I thought it was interesting. I feel like nowadays a huge thing is you believe it, that it's your faith. It's faith for a reason. You have the faith in it. Um, you, there's no proof. You have faith, right? Where in this movie, it is very much proof driven. Like you believe in Jesus because he's showing you the proof of like healing this baby and um, healing this person's you know, whatever and this, that, and the other. Like Jesus is providing the proof 
for people to believe, and then they have to believe on faith after that. So I just think it's interesting. I just, it was interesting because I didn't realize. I knew that Jesus could like walk on water, turn, you know, water into wine or, you know, heal the lame and sick and kill people and bring them back from the dead or whatever. I knew he could do all that, like in from, you know, what I knew. I didn't realize he was using it to get people to believe though, which is interesting. At least that's how this movie is portraying it. Don't come for me. Um, so I thought that was interesting. And then, because I said it for the forgiven um, Mormon movie, I have to say it for this movie, it is absolutely Christian propaganda. <laughs> so, um, it is definitely out here trying to like teach you Christian, Christian beliefs um, and trying to get you to agree with them. 100% because it shapes it in this moral, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, all very interesting. All very interesting things that, you know, I wasn't brought up in the church. So I've, I know basics and I know some things, but there were things portrayed in this that I was like, interesting. My favorite part is probably when Simon Peter was behind the door. She like opened these doors and he was there ready for her. And uh, it was just like totally great. That moment was awesome. My least favorite part is probably anytime men were absolute trash to Farrah. This movie opens and she immediately starts making out with uh, Voldy. And then like literally two minutes later, this other guy, Voldy's brother, tries to force himself on Farrah. And then later in the movie, there's a dude that's creepy toward Farrah. And then later in the movie, her dad is kind of creepy toward her. It's just like, there's so many men being creepy toward Farrah. Um, I was not about it. Recommend it? No. Watch it again? No. Uh, you're fine. It's it is not some kind of like film masterpiece that you need to go watch it by any means. So don't even waste your time. Specific moments on um, me being unsure that the mom is dead. I'm I'm really gonna lean towards she's dead because I thought she died in that scene, but I saw a woman toward the end that I thought was her mom. So I have no idea. Um, the men forcing themselves on Farrah. The dad cheating almost like right in front of the mom. So insane. Jesus like being in it and like portrayed um, without being portrayed was so interesting. Um, and then trigger warning for self-harm. She like cuts her own wrist to get blood to sign something. So insane. Um, this was really interesting. I feel like there were some shallower parts um, because they were trying to tackle a lot of stuff. Obviously it's the Bible. <laughs> so like they're trying to tackle a lot of stuff. Um, but they told the actual story of Ferris effectively. Um, I think it was a little too on the nose sometimes, which I suppose is the point, you know. Um, it was very, uh, it was very thou shall love God, thou shalt not kill. Like they said that a bunch. Um, so it is very much like these are our rules and, um, but it's fabulous because we can heal the sick. That's how it really felt. And also we can make it so you don't want revenge on your father. I don't know. It was very interesting. Um, and then not showing Jesus was an interesting choice. Um, but I'm, I'm behind why they made that choice. I feel like it was a good choice on the filmmaker's part to do that. Um, it did have that like classic old movie feel, which I did like. Um, but overall, this is fine. I kind of agree with the whole like it's middle of the road. Um, it is, it is heavy propaganda for sure. But um, besides that, it's fun to follow um, Farrah along through what she's going through. So it's fine. That's everything I have for the big fisherman. My final rating is five. <laughs> I want to say fish because the movie's called The Big Fisherman, but literally it has nothing to do with that. So um, five. Bibles <laughs> out of 10. Our total movie count is our parent death toll is cry count is still the same. If you want to keep up with the movie, I'll join what I'm watching when follow me on any social media. I'm out there. Uh, join Patreon. I've got a tier starting at just $1. We get every video a week early and a coupon code for merch. This month um, is all video trivia though. So like join the $5 tier for this month and participate in the video trivia. Good time. Good time. Buy merch. Merch is great. Merch is grand. Heck yeah. Until next time, come on, subscribe. I'm not in charge of your life. You are, so you do. And don't be.
very easy to say, like, the devil. But I would say don't be the prince that, you know, was that prince about it. I'm having a deja vu. Don't be him. <laughs>